about the dual, uh, about the dual problem. Um, so let's now kind of uh, make this a bit concrete and let's uh, look at a concrete optimization problem uh, and let's see how one can use duality in order to solve that problem. So, so the problem is, is the one of, uh, of denoising a signal. So I have a, a certain uh, noisy signal and I would like to denoise it, to remove the noise. Uh, so in the previous lecture, in this morning's lecture, I showed the example of a two-dimensional of an image. Okay, what I'm going to do in this afternoon's talk is I'm going to work with one-dimensional signals. It's going to be easier uh, and, uh, and the concepts will be, uh, it will be easier to explain the concepts, but kind of the main ideas go through for, for the two-dimensional image. Okay, so, so what you have on the left here is a noisy signal and on the right is the clear signal uh, without the noise. And the goal is how can I actually uh, go from the noisy signal to the clear image? So a very popular uh, model that I already mentioned this morning is the so-called rudin osher fatemi model. And it is based on total variation. So it can be written in the following way. So B here is the input. Okay, that's the noisy signal. Okay, that is the input. And so what you do is that you, okay, I forgot to put, there should be a lambda here, a regularization parameter is that you, uh, you minimize the deviation from the noisy signal, so in L2 norm. So uh, X is going to be the clear signal that you, your estimate of the clear signal. So you minimize uh, a, a, a combination of two terms. The first term is that you want to be close, obviously, to the, to the, input, in, to the input signal. And the second uh, term, this is the regularization term. Okay, this is the regularization. Okay, it tells it tells uh, it tells the kind of the optimizer that uh, I would like to find a signal that is piecewise constant. Okay, so I would like um, I would like the uh, I would like x not to change uh, too much. Okay, and I would like to have um, uh, pieces where the signal is constant, meaning that x i plus one is equal to x i. Okay, so obviously the signal will have to change at some point, but I prefer to have a few sudden changes than just uh, kind of a lot of very small changes. That is exactly what the L1 norm uh, will, will, inf will enforce in here, okay? So again, that's a, a sum of a smooth term and a non-smooth term to, to impose some sparsity, but not sparsity on the, on, the, on the vector x itself, but on the differences, on the finite differences of the vector x, okay? So, um, uh, okay, so let's rewrite this problem. So this, this uh, the summation, I mean, this total variation term, which is this sum of xi plus one minus xi, from i equals one to n minus one, this is what we call the total variation of x. Uh, I can, I'm going to rewrite it just for simplicity as the L1 norm of dx, where this is the, this d is the finite difference matrix. Okay, so essentially what you have is that D, uh, D times X1 up to Xn, okay, it will return to you X1, so X2, uh, no, I have it, X1 minus X2, X2 minus X1, oh, sorry, uh, what do I have here? So X2 minus X3, sorry, and so on and so forth until Xn minus, sorry, Xn minus one minus Xn. Okay, and so the total variation is equal to the L1 norm of this vector of finite differences. Mm -hmm. So really the problem that I want to solve can be written in this, uh, in this way. I want to minimize the L2 norm of X minus B squared plus uh, lambda times the L1 norm of D, uh, of D times X of the finite differences. Okay, so unlike uh, this morning, we looked at the Lasso problem where I wanted to minimize uh, a, a squared loss plus uh, an L1 norm of X. And we saw that the L1 norm has a simple prox function. So I was able to use the proximal gradient method. Um, in this case, I have inside the L1 norm, I have D times X. And so the problem doesn't become separable anymore. Uh, so this L1 norm of DX is not separable. Uh, rather the, the, the components of X are coupled together. And so the prox function is not uh, of, of this H of X of this regularization term is not simple. I cannot, I do not have a closed form expression for it. 
Okay, so what we would like to do is to find a way to kind of, uh, to, to solve that problem and to find an alternative way of solving uh, this optimization problem. Okay, so and the way that we're going to decouple things is exactly uh, by using duality by introducing a new additional variable y. Uh, okay, and this y will play the, the role of dx, and then I'm going to uh, look at the dual of that problem. Um, okay, so. Uh, exactly. So my, this is exactly what I was just saying. So this is my original problem. Okay, I'm going to rewrite this problem. I'm going to introduce a new, if you want, artificial variable y uh, that plays the role of dx. And now I have a constrained problem. So I have uh, I have to impose that y is equal to dx. Okay. Now this is a convex optimization problem. Uh, so I can compute its dual, and for and also I know that I will have strong duality. Because uh, because my objective is convex and because uh, uh, I mean because Slater's condition is obviously satisfied uh, because my my linear constraint will enter I mean okay there's actually the, my objective function is defined everywhere so there is no I mean the interior is still everywhere so so can, there there is nothing to really verify in here okay so the question now is how can we I would like to compute then the dual of this uh, of this optimization problem so this is what I'm going to do now uh, with you okay so I'm going to uh, I'm going to do some computation. We're going to compute this dual together and we're going to see that it has a nice form on which I can apply uh, uh, the, the methods for smooth and non-smooth optimization that we, that we uh, looked at together. Okay, so, so what is the dual of the problem? So, okay, let me write in, in blue. Um, so I want to mini, this is my problem, norm of x minus b squared plus lambda times the norm of dx. Okay. Right, so I should put here y subject to y is equal to dx. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce, uh, I'm going to define the Lagrangian. Okay, so the Lagrangian is L of x, y. And then uh, z is my new uh, is my new variable. Maybe I can actually uh, okay, let me write it in uh, in a different color just to say that this is uh, uh, this is a um, this is a dual variable. Okay, so what is the Lagrangian? So it is one half of norm of x minus b squared uh, plus lambda norm of y one. Plus, and then I will have, uh, I'll have a z transpose, I'll have a y minus dx. Okay, so remember this is how we define the dual, uh, the Lagrangian of a, of a problem. Okay, and so I can, uh, so now uh, I, I can define what the, the dual function is. So the dual function is g of z, it is equal to the minimization on z in Rm. Okay. Of this whole thing, so of L, no, oh, sorry, not sorry, the minimization is over x and y, apologies, uh, x and y in Rn. Um, okay, so, uh, okay, of uh, one half of norm of x minus b squared plus lambda norm of y1 plus z transpose y minus dx, okay? So I have two sets of variables I'm optimizing over x and y. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the x terms together and the y terms together. Okay, so I will get, this is the mean of, over x and y of one half of norm of x minus b squared, okay, minus z transpose dx plus lambda norm y of one, plus z transpose one, okay? So now I actually get the problem decouples, okay? So the problem is decoupled, okay? So meaning that the first part, this only depends on x. Uh, so this only depends on x. And this part only depends on y.
So this means that actually I can do the optimization separately. And so what I get really at the end, let me back to blue here. So G of Z is then equal to the minimum over X in Rn of one half of norm of X minus B squared minus Z transpose DX plus the minimum over Y in Rn of lambda one norm of Y plus Z transpose one. Okay. And, uh, uh, okay, and then I can uh, I can now look at each problem, each optimization problem independently. Okay, so let's uh, we'll see that both of them we can find an analytical solution. Okay, so uh, let's first let's look at the first one. So I want to minimize one half of norm x minus b squared. Okay, minus z transpose dx okay, over x in Rn. Okay, that is a simple uh, uh, optimization problem because the, the this is a quadratic function. So I know how to, uh, if I call this guy, let's say, I don't know, phi of x. So I said the gradient of phi of x is equal to zero. Okay, so this tells me that x minus b uh, minus d transpose z has to be equal to zero. Okay, and so this tells me that x is equal to b plus d, tr d transpose z. So this is the optimal point. So now if I want to get the value, so this means that uh, the minimum over x in Rn, one half norm of x minus b squared minus z transpose dx, this is equal to one half of the norm of d transpose z squared. Okay, I'm just, I'm plugging in, um, now plug this value in, so. Okay, so this is uh, uh, what, what I get here by plugging in the, the value of X. So I get one half of norm of uh, D transpose Z squared, and then minus Z transpose, uh, Z transpose D, B plus D transpose Z. Okay, so let's simplify this. So that's one half of norm of D transpose Z squared minus Z transpose DB plus Z transpose D, D transpose Z. Okay, note that this is nothing but the norm of D transpose Z squared. So, um, uh, sorry, so there should be a negative sign in here. This should be a negative sign. And so what I get at the end is minus one half norm of D transpose Z squared minus Z transpose D. Okay. So really just to uh, 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 summarize. So what I get is that this minimum is equal to minus one half norm of D transpose Z squared minus Z transpose D. Okay, this is the computation I just did here. So now uh, this this is this takes care of this part. Now now let's look at uh, what this part will give me. Okay, so I have to minimize over y in Rm this L1 norm plus a certain linear term. Okay, so let's let's have a look at it. So um, I want to minimize over y in Rm lambda times L1 norm. Then I have plus Z transpose Y. Okay, and so this actually, you can see that this further decouples because the components of Y will decouple. So I will get this is the minimum over Y in RM of uh, the summation from I equals one to M of lambda times the absolute value of YI plus ZI Y M. Okay, so you can see that it actually decouples. So I, I really have to solve only m uh, different uh, optimization uh, optimization problems of a single variable. Okay, so let's look at the problem of I want to minimize um, uh, now. I want to minimize in a single variable. Let me call it t. Okay, uh, lambda absolute value of t plus z times t. 
so this is the problem that we have to do. Okay, so um, uh, let's see. So is this uh, correct? Uh, yes. Okay, so I can I can actually equivalently um, just work with. Uh, Z divided by uh, just to make my life easier, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to divide by lambda. So I'm just going to work with the minimization of absolute value of t plus Z over lambda times t. Okay, so so kind of maybe uh, okay, this is not so hard to compute, but let's have a look at it pictorially. So uh, what you have is the absolute value function. Okay, so obviously you can see that if um, if z over lambda is equal to zero, then the solution of this problem is just equal to zero, okay? And then uh, what happens here is uh, what we do is that we take this absolute value function and we add to it a certain um, uh, a certain linear term, okay? So if uh, if the linear term is uh, is kind of uh, so I mean everything will depend on the slope of this linear term, okay? So if uh, for example uh, the slope of this linear term is less than one, okay, you can see that the resulting function that I will get, uh, that I have to minimize, will look like this. Okay. Uh, okay, let's see. So I have, this is my absolute value function, and then let me try uh, this. I guess I can write this thing. So, Okay, so this is what I get if I add the two together. So this is, in blue is the absolute value function. In, uh, in, in green is this linear function and the resulting function is the red one. So you can see that the minimum is still equal to, uh, is still at zero and is still equal to zero. Okay, thing, the, the thing will actually uh, tilt completely if I look now at, uh, sorry, so if, um, If you see, if the slope of this green line actually becomes very close to one, you see that my function um, will, I mean, if it becomes just above one, you can see that this red line, there will be an unbounded region. Okay, so let me redraw here. Uh, uh, let's, so this is the absolute value function. And uh, let's assume that my green line is uh, looks like this, okay? So then this means that the addition, uh, these, uh, these two functions is going to be, so one will have, um, it will look like this. And so the minimum will be equal to uh, minus infinity. Okay. So just the point of this whole discussion is to see that something quite easy is that, um, is to see that the minimum uh, is equal to uh, zero, okay, if, the absolute value of z over lambda is less than one. Okay, the slope of this green line is less than one. And this is going to be minus infinity uh, otherwise. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so then uh, this is, uh, we have then uh, done this optimization of, of this uh, function g of z. Okay, so we know exactly what the value of, of g of z is uh, for the different values of z. So let's now uh, kind of write down the dual. So I'm going to need a new page here. Uh, page. Yes, so, so now uh, my function g of z okay, is then going to be equal to minus one half, just this is from memory, minus one half d transpose z squared and then uh, minus z transpose b. Okay, this is if the norm of uh, z, the infinity norm of z, is less than lambda, and is going to be equal to minus infinity otherwise. Okay, let me just this. Okay, so let's let's remember why this is the case. Is because. Um, now, if I go back essentially to this uh, problem, maybe I should have written. So this means that here you know, the minimum over y in Rm of lambda norm y of one 
plus z transpose y. Okay, so this this is equal to zero if all if absolute value of z i is less than lambda for all i, okay, and it's going to be minus infinity otherwise. Okay, and this expression, this I write it just as the infinity norm of z is less than lambda. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, so then this is the problem. And so now the optimization problem is uh, the dual problem uh, for total variation uh, regularization is then uh, to maximize minus one half of the norm of D transpose Z squared minus Z transpose B subject to the infinity norm of z is less than lambda. Okay, so this is then the dual problem of my original uh, uh, of my original total variation regularization problem. So, okay, I mentioned before that we do have strong duality. That uh, and this is because my my function f is convex and is defined everywhere. So Slater's condition is obviously satisfied. Okay, so I do have that the, this minimization problem, my original problem is equal to the maximization of the dual. Okay, now the key uh, part of uh, uh, the key of the matter now is that the uh, optimization of the dual, the maximization of the dual is, has a very simple form. I want to maximize a certain quadratic form uh, subject to a very simple constraint, a box constraint, what we call a box constraint. Okay, this is uh, sometimes you see this, this is a box constraint. And the important thing is that projecting on a box is very easy. Uh, so I, I'm saying it's a box constraint because really the n-infinity norm looks like a box. Okay, so uh, this is really saying that um, that uh, so this is minus lambda plus lambda. Okay, and this is okay. So this is the convex. This is the uh, constraint set of my optimization problem. And so uh, projecting on uh, such a box is very easy. You just have to threshold. If a value of zi is bigger than lambda, then you just have to bring it back to lambda. And the same if it's less than minus lambda, you have to bring it back to minus lambda. OK, so the projection, um, so uh, if, I, uh, if, if I call b, let's say, the set of z such that the infinity norm of z is less than lambda, OK, then the projection on b of a certain z, okay, is equal to the ith component. So this is equal to uh, lambda if uh, zi is bigger than lambda. Uh, it's equal to minus lambda if zi is less than minus lambda and is equal to uh, just zi otherwise. Okay, so obviously if you're already in the box, you just leave it and otherwise you just uh, threshold to the value lambda. Okay, so now uh, what is the, so the projected gradient method is then very simple. So you write, if I write the projected gradient on the dual problem, it's going to be ZK plus one. Uh, it's going to be ZK plus one is equal to the projection on B of ZK plus, and then a certain uh, step size TK. And then I have to look at uh, the gradient of, of this function. So the gradient here, is going to be equal to, uh, so if this is uh, uh, my function, so it's going to be equal to D times D transpose uh, times, uh, times Z, okay? And then I have, uh, okay, there is a negative sign that I should add, okay? So, uh, okay, so it's going to be this and then, uh, minus db. Okay, so it will be uh, so dd transpose minus uh, db. Okay, so then this is the um, uh, uh, so this is the uh, the projected gradient method for the dual problem. Okay, you can see it has a very easy, uh, it 
as a very easy uh, expression. Uh, and obviously you can choose TK uh, because this is a quadratic function. You can choose TK just to be the largest eigenvalue of uh, one over the largest eigenvalue of, of D, D transpose, okay? Um, so in fact, this is something that I, that I implemented. And so uh, we observe the usual. So here, this is with step size. Uh, TK is equal to one over L, okay? And L here is just the lambda max of DD transpose. Uh, so this is, uh, so in blue here is what is the gradient method or the projected gradient method. Okay, and in red, uh, what we see is the fast projected gradient. Okay, so again, we see that the fast projected gradient converges uh, faster than the projected gradient. And we also see these ripples that we've already seen in the, in the previous uh, discussion. Okay. Uh, again, I mean, these algorithms are very simple to implement. So it really just takes five to 10 minutes to implement them on, on MATLAB. Uh, um, uh, okay, so, so now, uh, okay, so now I can actually look back at my problem. So uh, this was um, uh, in gray here, you see the, the noisy signal, okay? And uh, what you see is the denoised, uh, so this is, uh, Okay, in blue here, this is the denoised signal using total variation, a regularization. Okay, and this is what you see on the on the left here is the is this is the ground truth. Yeah, this is actually how I generated this data. So I generated this uh, piecewise constant signal and I added noise to it. And this gives you the gray signal. And then the blue signal is what I recovered using total variation regularization. So you can see that the blue does indeed remove the noise and uh, is getting, gets closer to the ground truth even, even though it's not exactly equal, but you can see that it is quite, uh, quite close to it. Okay, but, and, and it does quite a good job at removing this, uh, the noise that I imposed on, uh, on the clear signal, okay? So, um, uh, okay, so now this is uh, uh, kind of, th this is one uh, uh, case study of, uh, of duality, one important uh, application of, of duality, it is uh, to decouple uh, the terms in the objective function, okay? As, as, uh, as we did, so we had an, an, a dx inside the L1 norm and, uh, uh, we were able to define a new constraint to introduce an additional variable and then take the dual and then um, and then uh, and then this gives us uh, something on which we can apply existing methods okay so dual uh, dual methods have been uh, are very popular in uh, in especially in inverse problems in, in uh, for, for denoising but but also for more complicated problems and in, in imaging and so on and um, and recently, there has been very much interest in a, in a, in a variant of uh, in, in a variant of this dual method, something called the ADMM method. Okay, and ADMM stands for alternating direction method of multipliers. Okay, and uh, it is very much similar to what I have uh, described to you today, uh, except that it's not based on uh, the Lagrangian that I uh, described. So this, remember this, the Lagrangian was this term. Okay, but it was based on something called the augmented Lagrangian, where you add a certain quadratic term uh, to the Lagrangian. So this is the quadratic term that you add in the augmented Lagrangian with a certain relaxation parameter rho. Okay, so rho is positive, and this is called the augmented Lagrangian. And then in ADMM, uh, what you do is that uh, it's very similar to, to uh, I mean, it, it, it is very close to actually the algorithm that we just uh, worked with. Uh, so you work with the, uh, with the augmented Lagrangian and what you do is that you um, uh, iteratively, uh, um, uh, uh, I mean, optimize over X and Y and then update the dual variable uh, Z, okay? So it is based on, um, uh, I mean, if I, if I write it, uh, uh, so ADMM here very quickly. 
So ADMM, so this is based on augmented Lagrangian. Okay, and in this case, it's, uh, as I mentioned, this is uh, one half of norm of x minus b squared plus uh, lambda times the norm of y, this plus z transpose y minus dx plus rho over two norm of y minus dx squared. Okay, so the augmented Lagrangian at each step, you maintain x, y, and z. And so you have xk plus one is you minimize L rho, okay, at xk, um, uh, yk, and zk, okay, so sorry, x, yk, and zk, and then uh, yk plus one is you minimize L rho at uh, now xk plus one, y, and zk, okay, and then here you do a dual update, you do, uh, you essentially do a, a gradient step in, in z, okay, so I forgot the exact, uh, uh, the exact expression, but here you do a gradient step uh, in Z. Okay, so maybe let me let me look it up because I forgot the exact expression here. Um, okay, for this uh, particular uh, um, yeah, for this particular example of, of uh, total variation denoising, but essentially it's something again. It's a, it's a simple expression where ZK plus one is going to be equal to um okay I, uh, I i have to kind of uh, uh, rework it out but it's it's a simple expression but again i mean this is uh the idea is that the admm is another method based on um uh, based on a duality based on thinking about taking the dual of the problem uh and uh which uh, which essentially kind of decouples the variable in your problem uh and and uh, yes and, and makes it essentially simpler Okay, so um, so yes, and, and I, I mean, this is an area of research that is uh, has become very popular. So there has been a lot of uh, 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 dual, primal dual methods and so on that have been proposed in the literature. What I have just shown you is the probably the simplest one. And you can take this as a starting point and uh, to look at the, at the other ones that are available in, in the literature, okay? So I guess I will stop here. I finished a bit early actually, so. Um, I can take questions if you want. Um, let's see. Yes, so I'm happy to take questions if anyone has questions. You can look up the ADMM thing in the uh, while waiting for questions. So here, just to complete this part, this would be ZK plus rho times, uh, uh, in this case, that would be YK minus DXK, I guess, uh, minus DX. Yes, so what is the difference between uh, ordinary, ordinary Lagrangian and augmented Lagrangian? So the augmented Lagrangian, as I mentioned, has uh, this additional quadratic term in here that you that you see, okay, on the right. It has this quadratic term. The Lagrangian just has uh, you add the constraint in the objective function uh, in a linear way, uh, and the augmented Lagrangian has a, a quadratic term. It's another way of enforcing the uh, the constraint. Oh, the efficiency of both methods. So, uh, so the 
Okay, now what I have implemented, I mean, what I have explained uh, in, in this lecture is um, uh, just the usual, The I mean, here I'm, I, de I derive the dual and I'm running the projecting gradient method for the dual problem. <clears throat> so uh, the convergence rates we have derived uh, in the last lecture just uh, hold in this case. <clears throat> So if, uh, if uh, so, if L is the Lipschitz constant of uh, of, uh, of the gradient of G, so in this case it's lambda max of DD transpose, then your method will converge like L over K. Uh, if you use the standard uh, projected gradient method, and it will be L over K squared. If you use the fast gradient method, the fast projected gradient method. Um, if your if your dual is strongly convex, then you'll have linear convergence rate, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is for the standard uh, uh, thing that I presented in this lecture. For the ADMM, uh, the ADMM, had <clears throat> uh, the convergence rate is much harder to analyze. Um, so there are uh, results in the literature, but they're much more recent and, and it's, it's a bit more subtle. Uh, how you actually choose the, this row as well, um, how you choose this row, but it has become, it, it's uh, very popular because it works very well in practice. Uh, so uh, uh, yes, and it allows you to. Uh, not, I mean, it allows you to uh, to um, to deal with a large set of problems, not just this denoising problem, but other uh, large sets of problems. I mean, there is a very well known and very highly cited survey on ADMM, uh, which is quite recent. And uh, if you're interested, you can uh, kind of read about it. I can put a I can put a link to this survey in here. So. Survey and ADM. Okay, any other questions? Uh, Okay, so I'll wait for two minutes and uh, let's see. If... Okay, what about strong duality? So what about it? Uh, can you put more details uh, to your question? Oh, in augmented Lagrangian method. Uh, yes, so... Uh, I mean, I, I mean, the augmented Lagrangian, uh, we need the convexity. So, uh, so I mean, the, the, the dual, the dual problem. So the dual problem, this maximization of G of Z is not defined in terms of the augmented Lagrangian. I mean, the augmented Lagrangian is just used as a, um, as an algorithmic tool. Okay, to uh, to design some algorithms, but the dual problem, I mean, really, you should think of the dual problem and this whole theory of strong duality is just based on the Lagrangian, the usual Lagrangian. Okay, the augmented Lagrangian is 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 um, um, is, is just used to derive things like the ADMM and so on. Okay, so um, so uh, uh, yes. Mm -hmm.
Okay, in the case that the dual problem of the primal is not easy to solve, what we do? Uh, okay, the, the two problems are hard. Uh, yes, then probably your problem is hard to do. I, uh, I mean, there is no kind of magic uh, solution. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, sometimes there is just, uh, I mean, the way that I derive the dual, uh, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, sometimes, for example, reformulating the problem in a different way and taking the dual of a slightly different problem is not, uh, can, can uh, give you a, a way out. Uh, I mean, sometimes you just, I mean, these methods will just not work and you need some, something completely different. And that's why uh, the goal of this course is to try to explore some uh, different methods and uh, some will not work for your problem, but others may work and, uh, and your problem may be hard and then there's just no, no, no existing solution for for, for the problem. Um, that's, um, so maybe to come back to a question by someone called Bual who asked, um, if you want to define kind of a dual uh, problem uh, via the augmented Lagrangian, so if you define like a G tilde to be the minimum of the augmented Lagrangian, and then you, you look at the maximum of G tilde, then you will also have strong duality, uh, but this follows kind of almost immediately because the, um, when, uh, I mean, when you restrict, when you live on the constraint set, uh, the Lagrangian, I mean, and the augmented Lagrangian take the same value. Okay, so, uh, so you should have a really strong duality. I mean, from, um, uh, I mean, using the same, the same conditions that we, uh, that we, that we stated for strong duality of the usual, the, the regular Lagrangian. Yes, so we win the concavity for the dual problem. Um, actually, this is something that I did not comment uh, a lot on, and, and this is something that is very useful. So uh, if you, uh, I mean, if you start with a non-convex optimization problem, so let me maybe make a note about this. So if you start, if your problem, your original problem is minimize f of x subject to ax is equal to b, okay, and I call this f star, okay? And even if this problem is not convex, I can still look at the dual, so I can still form, think about maximize g of z, okay? Where z uh, is in the domain of g. Okay, and this is uh, the value of my dual problem. So we always have, we always have weak duality. Okay, so we always have G star is less than F star, uh, irrespective of whether F is convex or not. Okay, and, and uh, I also said that we always have that this guy, uh, that max G of Z, this is always a convex optimization problem. Okay, this is convex. Okay, so you can always get a lower bound. Oh, we don't see the screen. How come? Uh, Oh, you see it now. Okay. So, um, so you always have. Uh, so we can always get a lower bound on f star by solving a convex optimization problem. Now, this convex optimization problem, the maximization of g of z, uh, is called the Lagrangian relaxation of f. Okay, this is called the Lagrangian relaxation. Okay, and it's a convex optimization problem. And uh, what people have observed is that uh, even if you don't have strong duality, uh, in some cases, this can give you a very good lower bound on your optimization problem. And even in some cases where you don't have convexity, we still do have strong duality. And this is called the hidden convexity uh, setting. Okay. Uh, so, and, and there has been a lot of research in trying to understand when exactly this happens and uh, yeah, and trying to exploit this. So, 
In fact, if you if you think about, uh, I mean, if you remember in the very first lecture, I talked about the community detection problem. Uh, now, the the uh, I presented a, a maximization of a certain linear form subject to a certain matrix being positive semi-definite. This happens to be a Lagrangian relaxation for uh, a certain hard combinatorial optimization problem. Okay, and and I did not say it in this way at the time, but uh, uh, this is exactly what it is. So. Um, okay, which one is more efficient, dual based on augmented Lagrangian method or dual proximal gradient method? Okay, it depends on the problem. I mean, on, uh, so uh, by the way, so the dual based on augmented Lagrangian method, usually the, the augmented Lagrangian is a bit hard to work with directly uh, because. Um, the problem is that, um, um, I mean, uh, the, the essentially, if you look at the dual problem, let me zoom in the, the augmented Lagrangian, uh, this term that you see here, it couples the variables y and x, okay? Whereas for the usual Lagrangian, y and x are decoupled. So this is what actually allowed me to do all this derivation. When you put this in the augmented Lagrangian, you decouple it. So the way people get around this, uh, there is a sharing issue. Oh, you cannot see my screen. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, let's see. So, one second. So, Oh, I, I think you can see, no? Seems okay now. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, so I, I hope it was okay. So I wrote that this is this is called the Lagrangian relaxation. Now I was talking about the augmented Lagrangian. So you can see that this quadratic term will actually couple uh, the terms the y and the x, and this is kind of a bit problematic. And so that's why in the augmented Lagrangian method we do we do these two steps. Okay, so um, we first optimize over X and then we optimize over Y. If you want to optimize over X and Y jointly, this is called the augmented Lagrangian method, but the problem is that this is, um, this is usually harder to optimize over X and Y jointly. So that's why uh, we typically decouple uh, X and Y. Uh, so you want to say, so, okay, to get back to your question is whether ADMM is better or the dual proximal gradient, I mean, it really depends. I think on this problem of total variation, they probably have the same performance, uh, but for other problems, uh, maybe not. I, I mean, it's, it's difficult. it will be a problem specific question. I invite you to have a look at the survey on ADMM, which gives you a list of many, many problems and, and yeah. Um, Okay, the augmented Lagrangian with inequality constraints, the quadratic term change. What does this mean? Uh, uh, yes, okay, so I, I didn't get kind of what, what's the meaning of the last uh, comment. Uh, but I mean, here I'm, I'm really talking mostly about equality constraints. And in fact, all the theory of ADMM is based on equality constraints only. Uh, uh, okay, good. Uh, yes, I don't know the same quadratic term as which one. Uh, um, Okay. So, okay, so I guess we can um, stop here. So, Abdul Rahman, are you?
Thank you, Hamza. I oh. was just trying to say something to Goel about uh, Goel, about the expression. Mm -hmm. So the inequality constraint, the space of multipliers changes, but there is no reason for the Lagrangian expression. It's still duality product. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. If I understand the same than you about the question of where. Uh, yes, yeah, I wasn't sure exactly what he meant by uh, uh, yeah. it's not the same quadratic term. I don't know the same as what, so. Quadratic term does not change. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. If there are no more uh, questions, mm -hmm. uh, I think we can uh, now have, uh, uh, if you want to say uh, a few words about what is remaining for tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Yes, so I can. Uh, so tomorrow <clears throat> we look at, um, I will start by looking at Newton's method. Uh, so, so oh, I mean, all the methods we've seen so far are based on gradients and only first order information. <clears throat> so tomorrow I will look at uh, the Newton's method, which is based on second order information, so second derivatives and Hessian and so on. Uh, and I will uh, then talk about what we call structured optimization problems. So these are problems with very specific structure like linear programs. I will focus on linear programs, quadratic programs and semi-definite programs. And we will see how we can use Newton's method to, to solve such problems. Uh, especially, I will talk about path following methods uh, and interior point methods. So these are relatively advanced methods. So I will only kind of touch the surface a bit. Uh, but these are methods that are very robust and that are implemented in uh, even in commercial solvers and so on. And they are really state of the art methods. Uh, and essentially, all the problems that we have seen so far uh, can be solved using, using these methods. And uh, it's a very versatile framework uh, to, um, uh, to model problems. And, and it, will, it covers the Lasso problem, the, uh, uh, this total variation problem, uh, obviously least squares and so on and so forth. And in fact, if you wonder how I compute, I mean, whenever I plot uh, f of x minus f star, the f star I usually compute by using an interior point method uh, using an existing solver. Uh, uh, yeah. So that's um, so that, that's what co what's coming up for tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last day. So. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, still uh, exciting, mm -hmm. uh, exciting uh, uh, methods about optimization. Yeah. This Newton quasi Newton like yes, exactly. methods mm -hmm. um, with a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. So thank you, yeah, thank and you uh, uh, let us meet tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow morning mm -hmm. uh, at ten, as usual, the same uh, Zoom room okay. and uh, same uh, and streaming live streaming for people who prefer follow you by live streaming, mm -hmm. and the live streaming will be recorded so it will be available as videos on the UMCSP uh, Al Khawarizmi's uh, website uh, YouTube site. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you a lot. Thanks a lot. And see you tomorrow. See bye you bye. Tomorrow. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye.